Hey there, everybody, and welcome back. For those of you that are looking to learn how to host a .zip file or just a standard zipped file as a web app, stay tuned. I'm going to be covering the basics of how to do that in this video. Now, one quick thing to note before we get started, I can't speak to the level of security, encryption, or anything else regarding hosting using the two methods that I'll be covering in this video. So make sure that you do your own research and your due diligence and follow any and all applicable rules, regulations, laws, etc. Basically, I'm not responsible for how you use this information. Make sure that you are hosting the right things the right way, the way that you should be doing it. So let's continue on. Now, this should work for pretty much any .zip folder or file that you have. However, I'm going to be using those generated from AppGyver as this my method that I'm using for making a lot of the various content on my YouTube channel. So if you are using a different file or method, try it out. I'm covering a free method here, but I'm going to cover two specific options. One is AppGyver specific, one is not. So before we get started, first thing you need to do is pull up AppGyver. Second thing you need to do is go ahead and hit that like button and that subscribe button just to let me know that you like the content and let's jump in. So I have a very, very basic application. It's called Art Stuff, which I'm gonna be using for another video shortly. And you'll see it's just one page with this content here. So once you have your application built, you can go to the Launch tab and go to Distribute and it'll open up a tab similar to this. Now, I went ahead and used the configure and build options because it takes a little while and I've gotten it delivered, so no issues there. But option number one is when you're going to configure, AppGyver does give you a domain. So if you're interested, you can type in this and then this will basically be, we'll call it a subdomain or host name. Um, so I'm just going to type here so that I can copy and paste, but your domain is going to be whatever's in this box, .appgyver app dot com. So if we were to copy this, and again, I'll, I'll delete this out. Uh, but if we were to copy that, because I've already gone through and I've used the default settings, so dot zip build scheme, uh, didn't really change the icon or permissions, and I just clicked save and next. So now if I go paste this into the address bar, you'll see it actually loads the app. So I get this dot appgyver app dot com. But for those of you who want your own URL so that you can not necessarily have to rely on like any kind of URL masking, we're going to go to method two. So method one is just using configure and using your default .appgyver app URL, but could get a little complicated if you're trying to use a URL masker because it'll try to take you to the original AppGyver app URL if you're using multiple pages. So you would need to figure out how to make that work. But that is the first option. Second option is to download as a .zip file. So once you've configured, you would click build, choose those options, and then click download. What you get from here is a zip file that looks like this, although yours is going to change drastically depending on a couple of things. For example, how many pages, the content, stuff like that. So this is the folder. This is the file exactly as it's downloaded, which is basically this content here. Now this is why this method should work for you even if you're not using AppGyver. If you were to double click your index page, this is typically like your home page when you're uh, using some kind of a website that has a similar structure. So you'll see all the content is here, but that'll pull and use all of this information from what I know at least. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to a website called TinyHost. So the URL is up here and it does not require a credit card and it is completely free. You have a basic trial that you can test it out. One downside to the website is that the trial only allows you to upload up to three megabyte files. So you're very, very limited, but it can at least show you how it works. So what you're going to do here is when you go into TinyHost, you can just basically click get started. It doesn't require a credit card or anything like that. Once you've authenticated your email, you can go to this upload option. And basically we can just drop in our zip file. Now you'll see we have a restriction for three megabytes. So what we will do here is I'm just, this is not a recommended practice, but I'm gonna delete this fonts folder so that we have enough space. And then we will drag and drop once more. And you'll see we have a password protect option. 
for the Pro, but we're just going to try it out right now. So I did not specify a URL, so it just basically generated one, but we can click update and then you can change the URL here if you're interested. So if we were, you see we only allow one live site, so we're just gonna view the site and see how it pulls up. So you'll see it gives us this URL and this is effectively the AppGyver page with the little tiny host branding. Now if you want, you can delete this and we'll try giving it a slightly more custom name. So we'll put Tyler Talks Test. And then we will drag in our file that's just missing that one folder and click Launch. And when you're dealing with smaller files, it, feel, it appears to work pretty quickly. So when we click on this, you'll see we get Tyler Talks Test dot tiny site or dot tiny dot site. So when we have everything loaded, you have what looks like a little help section if there are any issues. But as it stands right now, <clears throat> the empty page works. So when we click on the empty page, you can see it loads page one. But if we go back, it loads this page. So I can't verify a ton of redirects are working, but at the very least, basic functionality seems to be working okay. And it does give you the update option so that you can update this website. So basically, you can build everything in AppGyver and then drag and drop here. Now, if you want to upgrade to Pro, you'll see the pricing, at least at the time of filming this video. So you have up to five sites, 70 megabyte or 75 megabyte files, or 12 sites and 75 megabyte files. So one really, really cool thing about this is if you think about the mobile apps that you could be building, they're typically going to have size, size limits in Google Play and the Apple App Store, at least at the time of filming this video. So considering this is going to be a zipped file and you're going to have a ton of online resources, or you likely will, this is a really, really affordable way to get a ton of different web apps out there. So it's something that's worth considering, although I don't quite know what functionality exists as far as security and things of that nature. But you can go to tiny.host and basically look at their homepage and documentation and see if this works for you. And you do have the ability, it looks like, to upload up to a gig. Not quite sure what the details are for that. I'm assuming that's this pro plan here. But... Uh, that's basically everything that we have. So again, this method should work for other options that are .zip files as well. I just haven't tested those. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below, and I'll see you all in the next video.